Hi guys, I'm Ryan Houston and welcome to my Fly Tying channel. If your video is about to start shortly, please take this opportunity to hit the like button down below, leave some comments, tell your friends. Interaction, likes, subscriptions help my channel to grow and help me to keep producing content for yourselves. If you're new to my channel, check out the other videos that I've got. There are over 500 videos at this stage, so there should be something there for everybody. Again, video is about to start. Hit that like button down below. Hi guys, so uh, we're going to tie a fly today called the Beltra Badger and this is a fly designed for fishing for salmon in a lake or loch in the west of Ireland. So I have here a this is an RX size 8 progressive uh, single and I'm using a black tie-in thread. So First things first, it's it's like a reduced version of a of a classic salmon fly, I suppose. So it's a little bit more complicated than than some salmon flies, uh, which can be difficult to translate into a small into a small hook. So firstly, I'm using a fine oval silver tinsel here, and I'm going to take this just slightly round the bend. And then I'll flip the fly over because it's easier to wrap into the curve. And then wrap on two or three turns of that, just as the very tip of our tag. And then we travel forward. You've moved your tinsel straight along the shank here. Uh, if you keep it actually on the top like this, once it's brought up, it'll make it easier for laying your tail in, I find. And we'll trim that off. So next we need a portion of yellow silk or rayon. So take a strand of that. Tie it in just at the front of where we intend it to happen. Again, flip the fly over. And then I'm allowing the silk to sort of flatten itself out, but not too much um, because it can then start to sort of fray a bit. So we're keeping it flat for the wrapping purposes to make a nice smooth tag. Take it back till it meets the tinsel and then travel forward again. Because it's now tying itself in, we can take off these few wraps that tied the initial bit of the silk in and wrap this forward. So. We're going to have a floss body, so we can actually use this as an underbody. I'm going to trim this bit here off, and then just use the what's left of our silk to create a nice smooth underbody. Tie it off, and then I'm taking it down because there's a return eye. I'm taking it down there, and that helps to take the taper out of that a little bit. So this fly here then has a golden pheasant topping as the tail. So I'm just going to lay that on for length. Check it. Because it's a small fly it doesn't have to be overly long. I've chosen also one that's fairly flat. And then I'll wrap that back until I'm happy enough with the proportions, which to me should be uh, somewhere just shy of the hook point here because we're going to put a very small butt on this as well. So we'll trim that off and then I'm going to use, you can use black ostrich but that can be quite difficult to tie in so what I'm going to use is a tiny little bit of black merino wool. You could use a black glister or something like that if you want. And once we get that on, wrap it in the one spot, sort of back and forward and that'll create a nice neat little butt to the fly. So next what I'm going to do is tie in a length of silver wire, fine silver wire, because we're going to do a tinsel body. Now you can use oval but what I would find is that uh, when you're using tinsel that uh, wires tend to uh, be more secure on it than, uh, than do ovals more clean to slip. And then we'll take our silver 
flat tinsel. Tie it in back up to where we want the uh, butt to end and then wrap that forward in overlapping turns until we get to around about that return eye and tie across it. Flip it back and tie over it twice or so and that will hold that in position. Next it is a lemon hackle. I'm going to use a cock hackle for the body and tie that in by its butt section here and then we'll wrap it back. Now you can choose to wrap it the entire way back uh, and I've said if you want a busher fly, this is a lock fly so it tends to, it's quite a pronounced sort of hammer on it but you could you could half uh, strip it if you wanted it to be slimmer uh, and as I said the number of turns would be up to yourself but I would say if you take that back in about three turns or so and then leave it to hang while we get the first turn of the tinsel on or the wire sorry catch that with the wire on that second turn of tinsel or turn of wire sorry and then wind this up through the body trying not to catch down too many uh, fibers if we can till we get to the front and then we're going to tie that in underneath and break off the hackle. So we'll just trim this or break it off whichever suits and then we'll just squeeze the hackles down to even it out ready for the throat hackle. So uh, the throat on this one is a blue hackle uh, and it, it does call for a cock one but what I find here is that hen hackles or soft hackles will give you a much better shape and we also have the uh, the palmered cock hackle underneath to support it so it may actually give you a little bit more movement so we tie in a little bright blue soft hackle and I'm just going to wrap it between finger and thumb just to double it as it goes so as it comes around stroke all back pass it over stroke it back Now, if you're doing sort of a more classic style of a fly, then you probably would have these uh, slightly shorter than this, but this is a lock style fly, so I think it probably benefits from having that sort of palmered bumble type shaping to it. So we'll just tie that down and create like a nice solid platform for putting the wing on. There's a couple of fibers I don't like the look of, so I'll get rid of them. So the wing is, as it implies, is uh, badger, uh, but it has a little bit of red bucktail as the underwing. Uh, however, on a smaller size fly like this, I am going to opt for red dyed squirrel. And I'm gonna take a little bunch of that. I'm going to measure it out to about the length of the tail. Pull it back a little bit so it's a bit shorter. Transfer hands and trim that off. I'm going to ensure that our thread is waxed. Put on a couple of wraps just for to support it. Set that on and tie two wraps across it so the tag ends of it here are sticking out forward. So next we're going to put on the badger. So this is actually a bit of Canadian badger or whatever because badgers are protected and it's not that easy to get badger hair. If you don't have badger hair I would say a suitable uh, alternative would be natural grey squirrel. So 
going to take a bunch of this badger here and cut it off. Hold it by the tips because it's only the yard hairs I want and get rid of any of the under fur that's in it. Measure this up to be just slightly longer than the red hair underneath it. Set it on so the tag end tips match here and put on a couple of turns. So next to make sure that this, because these hairs don't tend to collapse too well under, uh, under your tying thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure them in with glue wraps. So that's sitting up there. I take some super glue and run it on an inch maybe of thread. And then start to wrap forward over these tag ends so that the glue then will come off the thread into those and hold the wing in place. So to finish this fly it has um, golden pheasant topping over it. I would be looking for one that's fairly straight otherwise the curvature will probably give you issues. So I'm just going to have a look through here, take one out, check it for shape, I'm going to strip back the fluff from this end of it and then set it on top and then get sort of like a loose pinched lap to hold it in place and then flip the stop directly up on top, check it for position when you're happy with it then start to tighten it down and hold the hold it in position here while you trim it because if you don't and you move the the base of the stock then it will move the or the way the wing sits on top of the or sorry the way the feather sits on the top of the wing and then again I'm going to super glue an inch or so of thread and create the head out of this. So hold the wing in position and then wrap over those cut ends and finish off the fly. So now that all the reins on that fly is to finish the head off it. So I uh, we'll just let that super glue dry and then I uh, use some clear varnish so we'll pull that out of there and we'll go over to a, the previously tied one and then we'll take our clear varnish this is Sally Hansen hard as nails with nylon and just rotate the fly varnish the head and then leave that to sit. So that is our Beltra Badger salmon fly designed for fishing the lock for salmon. Hopefully you like what you've seen. If you did give us a like, subscribe, tell your friends and until next time, tight lines and thanks for watching.